Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Anna and my channel is mainly focused on homemaking. And some time ago, I posted a video titled Homemaking Below the Poverty Line. And it was really just a video of a day in my life doing basic things that I do. And there was so much support on that video and I think a lot of people could relate and a lot of people are going through a similar financial experience and the comments were just 99% amazing but there was that 1% that was a little bit resistant and had some pushback and that's totally fine it's YouTube it's expected and everyone is totally entitled to their own opinions and but at the end of the day they're just opinions because i know my truth my family's financial situation and i know that i there's no incentive for me to really be disingenuous about our financial situation the truth of the matter is is that my husband and i have been together for eight years now and most of those years we have pulled in anywhere from 20 to 30 thousand dollars a year and in the state that we live in it varies from state to state but the particular state that we live in the poverty line is forty three thousand dollars for a family of four and the whole point of that video was really just to say I realize that we are technically rich. We are rich in all the ways that matter. We have food, we have running water, we have comfortable beds, we have nice things, we have air conditioning. We truly have it all. Something that I've really been working on lately is learning how to be content with what I have. And so my prayer for that video was for it to breed contentment in the place that I am and hopefully help other people breed contentment in their own lives and their own situations. So I really wanted to share this video talking about how we make it all work. Now, this isn't going to be a budgeting video because that is a video in and of itself. And it's also not going to be an exhaustive video of all the tips and everything, because I feel like I could talk for a straight hour about all the little things that we do to save money. But I do want to open up about some of the tips and some of the little life hacks that we have learned that have drastically saved us money that might help you if you are also living low income. So one of the biggest expenses that I have been able to cut down on is my phone bill. We used to be a family unit. So it was my dad, my mom, my sister and I, and my dad passed away about eight years ago and my mom is getting married. And so she's switching plans and our phone bill was just climbing and climbing and getting more and more expensive. And so we were all kind of trying to figure out what we were going to do. And my husband had mentioned Mint Mobile to me and he asked if I wanted to give it a try. So I said, yeah, and I have been using Mint Mobile for almost a year now. And I'm so excited to say that today's video is in partnership with Mint Mobile. They offer premium wireless for just $15 a month, which is honestly just unheard of. Mint Mobile checked all the boxes. I was able to get high speed data and unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. I was able to use the current phone that I had, my phone number, all my existing contacts, everything like that, using my eSIM card in my phone. And most phones have that. And so using that, you can sign in and activate your phone within 
15 minutes. And if you're one of the very few people that don't have an eSIM card in your phone, then Mint Mobile will send you one for free. And honestly, after the switch, I lived my life as normal. I <laughs> listen to music on my runs. I listen to YouTube videos and podcasts while I'm doing housework. And so a lot of time went by and I had completely forgot that I made the switch. So if you want to get started saving on your phone bill like I have, then you can click on the link in the description below and you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month whenever you purchase a three month plan. Another way that we make our low income work is by constantly looking for deals. A lot of the time people just assume that the price is the price and they pay for whatever the store is asking or whatever Amazon is asking. And we personally are constantly seeking out a better price. My husband is the king of this. And honestly, his mindset is just so frugal. And I love, I honestly love that about him, but I see him on websites like slick deals. If you've never heard of that before, that's a really good one to check out. I don't frequent it a lot, but I see him scrolling in bed every morning to see what the deals are of the day. And they have all kinds of things. Now, not everything is a great deal, but occasionally you will run across something that you are constantly using. So for instance, like us, it could be our protein powder, soap that we use, uh, razors, just stuff like that. You'll see like a really good like coupon deal come up. It'll take you to the website and then you can purchase it through there. We also utilize local places around us. So for instance, Bargain Hunt. Um, they used to be called Essex, but they have switched to Bargain Hunt. So see if you have a Bargain Hunt in your area. We frequent that a lot. And that is actually one place that we consistently buy our protein powder because protein powder is expensive. And then another store that we go to is called Kivadu. Um, I don't know. I, I think that they are kind of all over the place, but there are so many stores that are like this. And essentially what they have done is they have bought pallets of returns. It could be from Amazon or all kinds of different stores. And they have the prices marked down extremely low. Um, our Kivadu we went there recently and since my mom, I mentioned my mom is getting married, I was kind of on the hunt for some shoes and we all know dress shoes are really expensive. I, I really don't want to pay $60 or whatever it might be over at Rack Room Shoes or even pay Amazon prices for a pair of shoes that I'm probably going to wear once. So when we went over there, they had a ton of shoes and guess how much they were? a dollar fifty a dollar fifty i have the shoe here that i'm going to wear to my mom's wedding and it's beautiful and it's a gold shoe she's getting married in the fall and i paid a dollar fifty for these and so just actively seeking out what you need and putting in the effort to find a good deal on it will honestly change your life a lot of the pushback that I got was mainly just like, you have way too many nice quality things to be living below the poverty line. And we honestly, we don't buy anything new. We utilize places like Facebook Marketplace, thrift stores, Goodwill, um, uh, even eBay sometimes but we also utilize wholesale returns. Now you may, I have never heard of this before my husband, but you may have to do a little bit of digging, ask around your area. If like, you know, you have any friends that might know of a place like this, because they're sort of 
a little bit hush hushy in a way, but you may be able to do some online research and find one in your area. Um, we do not have one in our specific town, but we have one that's less than an hour away. So we utilize that a lot. And essentially it's kind of like the Kivadu thing where they get in pallets of items at, in bulk that have been returned. And what they typically do is they will post it all online and they will do auctions on it. And when they do the auctions on it, they will do it on a certain day of the week and everyone bids and then there will be a certain day that everyone has to come and pick up by a certain time. And my husband has used this so many times for a lot of the home items that we have in our house. There will be things like really high quality mattresses, tables, chandeliers, all kinds of home goods. And sometimes people don't need it or don't want it and aren't bidding on it. And so if you are the lowest bidder on that and you're not bidding a whole lot, then you're going to get that for really, really cheap. And I'd be lying to you if I said that my husband hasn't bid on a few things that were extremely pricey and then resold them later on. So a little bit of food for thought on how to make a little extra money on the side. Another way that we have drastically saved money is by repairing things. Now, I know that not everyone is cut out for this, but by the grace of God, my husband is. And maybe if your husband isn't or you're not a handy guy, maybe you know someone who is and it would still be less expensive to pay them to replace a small part than it would be to buy something new. A lot of the time when something breaks in someone's house, they just assume that all is lost on it and they need to get rid of it and get something new. And so a lot of the time people just want to get it out of their house, get it out of their way so they can move on and buy a new item. And so my husband buys broken things all the time, maybe a little too often because he can't keep up with what he needs to fix <laughs> if he saw our carport. However, um, it has his ability to do that has truly been a blessing for us. We have done this so many times. Um, we have done it with our washer and dryer. We've done it with our dishwasher. He just recently purchased a um, a water heater that isn't working and he knows that what it needs to correct the issue. And these are things that we could never afford new. And just taking the time to do a little bit of research, um, order that part off of eBay or wherever, or, you know, your local store, sometimes it's a Lowe's fix. Sometimes, you know, it just depends, but just taking the time to do that can save you so much money. When it comes to things like high quality food, I highly encourage you to just do some research about all of the grocery stores in your area and see where places are price gouging and where they are far more reasonable. Here in our area, we have what's called an Aldi or an Aldi. I think it depends on the accent. I call it Aldi and that is where I go first always because if I buy the same thing let's say at Walmart as I'm going to Aldi the price difference is going to be drastic and if you are shopping at places like Publix I mean obviously Whole Foods Publix Kroger all of those places they are robbing you of your money the the price difference is wild if you are one of those people who just don't really pay attention. So for me personally, what I will do is I go to Aldi first and I get everything that I need. And then if there are some miscellaneous items that you just cannot get at Aldi, they don't have everything, then I will do a Walmart pickup. And you know, staying away from pre-packaged items is really the best way to save money. Just kind of taking the time to make things and make snacks. But if you are on a time crunch and you just absolutely 
cannot get with the making everything from scratch program. I get it. It's hard. It's a lot of work. And if you just can't get there, then what I mentioned earlier, Bargain Hunt, they also carry snacks. And a lot of the times we can find a lot of healthy snacks there. And sometimes we go there just for fun to pick up a few snacks. So if you've never checked that out for your like prepackaged snack food, then I would definitely suggest that. Another tip that I have that I think I've maybe mentioned in another video is just to have like a little ongoing list of things that aren't urgent, but are things that would be nice to have, would maybe make life easier and just compile a list all year long. And when Christmas time rolls around and people, people ask you, think about it. People ask you what you want all the time. And how many times do you say, Oh, I don't know. Or you're just maybe too shy to tell them what you want. Um, I think it is so much better to just openly tell people what you want for Christmas when they ask. And so, because they're going to buy something for you either way, they're going to spend their hard earned money on you because they love you and they want to. And so you can either give them something that you will be just so excited about something that would be so useful to you, or you can let them waste their money. And I think that that is not as loving <laughs> as letting them know what you want. And don't be afraid to ask your friends and family for their donate bags whenever they're decluttering their house. Even if it's some, not necessarily something that you want, it may be something valuable enough to where you can resell it on Marketplace or on eBay or Poshmark or something like that and retain that money so you can either help provide for your family or you can buy something that you really want. We never donate valuable things. We always take the time to resell it. And, you know, it truly adds up. Every little bit counts. And like I said, I don't want this video to be too exhaustive. So I'm going to try to wrap it up here. And we may make a part two in the future talking about more tips, because like I said in the beginning, I could talk about this in little ways to save money, make money forever. And I'm sure if my husband sat down with me, we could really chat for a very long time. But lastly, I just encourage you to be patient. You know, we have been together, like I said, eight years and we have just slowly over the course of eight years turned our home that was pretty bare bones when, you know, we first got together. It was pretty bare bones and we just slowly turned it into a home with so much patience. You don't have to have it all. And like I said, as long as you have food on the table, running water, air conditioning, a place to tuck your children in safely at night, you are beyond rich and you truly have it all. If you liked this video and you want to see more tips and tricks, maybe a part two, if you will, then let me know in the comment section below. And if there's anything that you personally have learned to save money, also let everybody know in the comment section. I thank you all so much for being here, for being so supportive and Lord willing, I will see you all at the next video. Bye.